So is there, can life be approached scientifically? I, I remember in previous shows your son asked, uh, does physics have any relationship to life? Yes, that's where I started. And as I explained in the earlier shows that it has been a long journey, about five years to get there. But the starting was a point of what, what is the correlation between science and life itself. And um, as I explained in the previous shows, that there is a connection. And that's what kept me going and working on this. And there are a lot of parallels I saw on the way. And uh, so essentially, the ultimate destination of this journey is to be able to interpret scientifically what does what does what we study in science mean to life? Mm. Uh, and as far as I'll say, the more religious people, uh, can life be explained only through science, or does actually you need God to explain life? And yeah, that's a very interesting question. You're talking about a triangle here: the science and the religion and the consciousness. It's a very uh, complex triangle. And uh, that's why I tried to solve that triangle or get in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. And it's very interesting relationship between, the, between those three. And if you look at science, it's a study of matter, you know, basically inanimate matter. We study atoms, electrons, uh, and things, things that do not have their own consciousness, like things that move, like Newtonian laws, you apply a force to them and they move. But if you don't apply a force, they don't move. You can't accelerate them without an ex external force. Mm -hmm. So that's like inanimate matter. Uh, you have radios, TVs, and we have built, you know, rockets and uh, space uh, vehicles and whatnot. All of those are inanimate material things. But even ina inanimate things have their own vibration. Correct, correct. If you go inside, look in the atom inside, there's an electron moving at speed of light, almost around the nucleus. Mm -hmm. And and in between, uh, in the atom itself, there's a lot of empty space, and that's a lot of vacuum energy there. So nothing is dead there. Even if, when you uh, look at a wall or a brick, you knock at it, you know, it looks very solid and there's nothing is moving. But inside, it's full of motion. If you really had a way to look at what's going on at a very uh, micro scale. If you could see all the electrons, you couldn't see through them. It's uh, They are moving at almost speed of light in that seemingly dead, inanimate mm -hmm. matter. So it's full of life, even what we see as, as dead. Yeah. So that's where it all meshes together that the main thing in science, the, the challenge in science has been what is the, uh, the physics of the smallest thing that one could imagine? And what is the physics of the biggest thing one could imagine? The smallest being below Planck scale, where nobody has seen or measured anything. Mm -hmm. I mean, like Planck scale is roughly 10 to the power minus 35 meters. That is, you know, you're talking about if you divide a meter or let's say three feet by, by 35 times 10. 10, divide by 10, 35 times, that's how small that is. And there's no instruments that can measure anything in that range. In fact, we can't measure things even 10 raised to the power minus 10 or below. It's but, hard to see them, mm -hmm. even with electron microscope and things like that. But in theory, it exists. Well, that's the question. If it exists, how do we prove it if we can't measure it? And but we have theories, uh, scientific theories, which we have uh, calibrated or correlated against what we can measure. Now these mathematical theories we can extrapolate. Let's say we, uh, let's say Einstein's theory of relativity. You can measure th and see things in uh, in the universe, and you can see, uh, let's say, molecules or big big uh, big things. Uh, uh, through microscopes, mm -hmm. so you can correlate them in that scale uh, where you can see, uh, let's say, from a molecule size to all the way to the size of the universe. 
Now that's the range. Now what is beyond that range, the below it and above it, and that has been a major challenge to science. Now that's where a lot of the uh, physics resides that governs our life. Now if you convert, interestingly, you can convert that kind of uh, theme as to what we know and what we don't know to mind also. When we look at the mind, it's uh, uh, we say that they, we use less than 10, 5 to 10 percent of our mind is conscious mind. Mm -hmm. That's where we think, that's where we take actions, and that's where we decide what we want to do. We think we decide, but uh, the uh, neuroscience has told us that rest 95 percent or 90 percent or more is roughly a subconscious mind where we cannot measure ourselves. Even we don't know who we are in that region of our mind. So it correlates so well between the mind and the universe that, you know, some scientists would call it the mind of the universe or the universe is mind itself or the mind and matter correlation. It's a straightforward one-on-one -on -one correspondence how they, how they work in...